subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The Taliban has just announced that its co-founder Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar will be the new head of the new Afghan government. As a month since the Taliban took over the country passes by, it's clear that Sharia will be the law of the land. Now Sharia is derived from Quran and the hadiths, the statements, actions and teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. In most Islamic countries, Sharia finds its place in personal and legal matters. What is clear from Taliban led regime is that Sharia will be enforced and everything else will be within its realm. The question then becomes, does the Sharia law influence individual freedoms? Are critics of the Islamic law right when they say that Sharia and individual freedoms cannot coexist? Well, it is difficult to establish up to what extent a country follows the Sharia law. However, people have expressed their preference in a Pew Research Center survey conducted in 2013. The survey also had a question in which people were asked their preferences about Sharia as the law of their country. Two think tanks, the Ghetto Institute in Washington DC, United States, and the Fraser Institute in Canada release a Human Freedom Index report every year, which also gives us data on the personal freedom an individual enjoys in their country. The Personal Freedom Index broadly measures two categories, legal protection and security, which includes civil justice, security of people from terror and women's safety, and specific personal freedoms, which include freedoms pertaining to movement, religion, civil society, expression, and information in identity and relationships. For about 23 countries, which had data for both the parameters, preference that is preference for Sharia and personal freedom index score, we find a moderate negative relationship with a coefficient of minus 0.57, which essentially means that in about 57% of our samples, an increase in approval or preference for Sharia comes with the loss of personal freedom. Our analysis shows that Bosnia and Herzegovina and Albania, two Muslim majority countries in the eastern part of Europe, where individuals were freer than the global average score, also had the lowest approval ratings for Sharia as the law of the land. Around 10 to 12 percent people said that Sharia should be the law of the land, whereas their personal freedom scores were significantly much higher than their other uh, Muslim majority countries. But in the rest of the Muslim majority nations, people enjoyed less freedom than the global average. Iraq where the personal freedom score was the lowest in the human freedom index had 91% respondents saying that Sharia should be the law of the land in the Pew survey. Egypt, Bangladesh, Pakistan are other prominent examples of people wanting the Sharia law and possessing low level of personal freedom. Now the question is why do Islamic countries rate poorly on personal freedoms? The key lies in the absence of democracy in many of them. According to a study by Mustafa Akyol, who is a senior fellow at the Keter Institute in Washington DC and an expert on Islam and modernity, there exists a strong positive correlation between democracy and human freedom. Which essentially means the more successful a democracy is, the more individual freedom it offers to its people. The 2020 edition of the Human Freedom Index report also shows that there is a high degree of positive correlation between human freedoms and the level of democracy and not just in Islamic countries. Which is why authoritarian regimes like China, Venezuela, North Korea, where Sharia doesn't even exist, also have the lowest human freedom scores. British publication The Economist magazine's intelligence unit also published an annual democracy index which ranks countries based on the quality of democracy. They categorize it into four parts, full democracies, flawed democracies, hybrid regimes and authoritarian regimes. If you look at their data, then in the last four years of the 50 to 55 authoritarian regimes in the index, more than half of them hail from Muslim majority countries. In fact, in 2020 rankings, about 13 Muslim majority nations featured in the bottom 20 of the democracy index. So the question is, why democracy doesn't find its way in the Islamic world? Well, according to a study by the United States Institute of Peace, which is an American think tank working in conflict management, 
More than religion, the reasons for high level of authoritarianism in Islamic countries are political, economic, cultural and historical. The series cites the view of different school of thoughts in democracy and Islam. It shows that a vast majority of Muslim thinkers are opposed to democracy simply because it gives more value to the law created by humans over the law laid down by the Almighty. But there also exists a school of thought that is in favor of new ideas, practices and institutions. This particular school stresses the need for continuity of basic Islamic traditions but believes that Islamic law, that is Sharia, is historically conditioned and needs to be reinterpreted in the light of the changing needs of the modern society. The paper has said this. To investigate more on this, the print also reached out to experts and according to Hilal Ahmed, who is a scholar of political Islam and associate professor at the Center for Study of Developing Societies, CSDS, Islam and Sharia and even the notion of democracy are highly diversified concepts. This he tells to the print. This heterogeneity should be recognized as a precondition to talk about the complex ways in which ideas are used in the Muslim world. He says that one may identify two observable trends. First, the authoritarian regimes such as Saudi Arabia evoke Sharia to legitimize their rule in the name of Islam. These regimes suppress dissent to establish Sharia. They always take refuge in the conventional binary between Sharia and democracy. This is what Ahmed has told the print. The second point that he makes is that there are populist regimes such as Turkey and Pakistan where Sharia and Islam are used to get popular support. In this case, Sharia is seen as a solution of all the problems. By the way, in Islam, there does exist a concept of shura in which a ruler is chosen after consultation, which is sought to be the premise for democracy in the Islamic world. However, Sultan Shaheen, editor of the New Age Islam, which is a progressive website working on rethinking Islamic postulates, said that the problems exist in the Sharia too. With the concept of Shura, that's what he says, with the concept of Shura placed in Quran, Islamic countries should not have dynasties and monarchies at all. But that's not the case. The Sharia law is based on the interpretation of the Quran, which came about 150 to 200 years after the Prophet Muhammad died, he told the print. When the Arab Spring Revolution of the last decade led to civil war situations in many Islamic countries, many had hoped that the Islamic world would turn towards democracy, but it has proven to be a false hope. Asked how democracy, which is essential to personal freedoms, can take hold in the Islamic world, Amr al has said, there is a serious lack of intellectual work as well as political debates on this question in these countries. In his view, there is a need to evolve a democratic system suitable for the adherence of Islam instead of evoking outdated intellectual claims such as the Islamic notion of democracy. Now the question is, is there a way out? Uh, well, according to Sultan Shaheen, the Quran cannot be changed, but there does exist a scope for improvement in the Sharia law. And that through various instruments is available in Islam. Now he says that Muslim scholars can ameliorate the situation if they believe that the objective of Sharia is to bring harmony. And if they think that restricting human rights is causing disharmony, then they might even change the law. Of course, he says that this will only happen if the Muslim scholars decide to follow Islamic rules about human rights at the moment ulema which are Muslim scholars who should have been the biggest defenders of propagators of human rights are the biggest violators across the world. That is what he said. Whether the new Taliban government turns out to be different or not so different from other Islamic nations, that only time could tell us. That's all for this segment. This is Nikhil Rampal. Keep tracking the print.